begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, it is very easy to witness from far away a situation of tyranny, a situation of dhulm, and to disconnect yourself from that tyranny and to say what a horrible tyrant that person is and what a great people those that resist that tyrant are. But what is much more difficult is for one to actually interrogate themselves as the Prophet ﷺ taught us to do with every single element of our lives in the most personal of ways, even with stories that happened long ago. We are in the day of Ashura, a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Musa alayhi salam over the tyrant Fir'aun, a day that other narrations suggest was also the day that Nuh alayhi salam, his safina, his ship had completed its rescue and he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A day after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, where Al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his grandson sallallahu alayhi wasallam, went forth to confront a tyrant and was honored with shahada in one of the greatest tragedies in Islamic history. A day in which we reflect upon a person confronting dhulm, confronting oppression in the most personal and most difficult of ways. And I want you to think about the way the Prophet ﷺ spoke about every other terminology that we have in our deen. Al-Muslimu, qala alayhi salatu wa salam, al-Muslimu, man salima al-Muslimuna min nisanihi wa yadi. A Muslim is the one from whom other people feel safe from their hand and from their tongues. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, al-Muslimu man salima al-Nas. A Muslim is the one from whom the people feel safe from their hand and feel safe from their tongue. He also said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal-mu'minu man aminahu al-Nas ala dima'ihim wa ala amwalihim. And a mu'min, a believer, is the one that the people feel safe. They feel a sense of trust when it comes to their blood and when it comes to their wealth. And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal-muhajiru man hajar al-khataya wa al-dhunub. And a muhajir, a person who truly makes hijrah, is not the person who just migrates from one land to another, but a person who migrates away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited from the sinful things, the major and the minor, the public and the private. That hijrah has a personal element. That Islam, being a Muslim, has a personal element. That being a mu'min has a personal element that involves everyone and everything around you. Al-mujahidu man jahada nafsa. A person who is mujahid is not just the one who's in the battlefield. Certainly that is one form of being engaged in a struggle. But a mujahid is the one who strives against themselves to make sure that they purge all of the evil from within themselves. So all of these terms, they have an implementation at a very deep level. And I want you to think about the people of Musa alayhi salam. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them, from Fir'aun. And they have in their minds a very clear idea of what a zalim, of what a tyrant looks like. If you were to say to Bani Israel the word zalim, tyrant, immediately a certain image will come in their minds and it's going to be Fir'aun because they experienced the cruelty of Fir'aun and they knew him to be a zalim. And if you were to ask anyone in here, Think about a zalim. Surely you would think about a certain oppressor, a certain dictator, someone other than yourself. But I want you to think about the people of Musa alayhi salam, who had a very specific idea of what a zalim is, of what an oppressor is. And then Musa says to them, Ya qawmi innakum zalamtum anfusakum bittikhadikum al ijl. Oh my people, you have oppressed yourselves. You have oppressed yourselves. Some might think, wait, what? We're oppressors? Yes. You have become oppressors if only to yourselves. 
by resorting back to the shirk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from. And when Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that you do not wrong yourselves in these days, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't wrong yourselves in these days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns you from being a zalim li nafsi. And there are some people, minhum zalimun li nafsi, some people that wrong themselves. Think to yourself, how could I be an oppressor even to myself? Well, you can't be an oppressor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you can't hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how are you an oppressor to yourself? In your entire existence as a soul, as a ruh. For a short period of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala merges this ruh with this jasad, this body and this soul together to become nafs, to become this self. And you are now the occupier of this soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted you with something so precious. No other human being can create it. They can play and tinker with artificial intelligence. No one can create a real ruh except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah puts that in your care and gives you the tools. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Verily he has succeeded who has purified it. And verily he has failed who has harmed it who has dirtied it. Allah Azza wa Jal put that soul at the mercy of the tools that you have in this dunya as a nafs now. And on the day of judgment, the soul and the body will be at war with one another for the one that used to wrong himself. The hand testifies, the tongue testifies, the eyes testify. And you would say to those, An kunna kunna nujadil. I was arguing on your behalf. But in reality, you oppressed yourself because Allah gave you a soul and you are the owner of that for a moment here in that you have the tools to purify or the tools to corrupt. And if you choose to corrupt, you corrupt yourself and you oppress yourself. Don't wrong yourselves. If that's the very minimum of it, do not become an oppressor to yourself. And so when we think about zulm, there is the capacity of looking deep inside and saying, am I an oppressor to myself? When we think about zulm, there is the capacity of not just thinking of yourself as the ruler of a nation, but asking yourself very critically, have I become a zalim to my family? Have I become a zalim to the people that have dealt with me in wealth? Have I carried any type of zulm that is unrectified and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will confront me with on the day of judgment? And sometimes we may distract with our acts of worship from our acts of zulm. And I want you to think about a narration in Bukhari that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he was approached by some, some people from Al Iraq and they asked him about dam al ba'ul, about the blood of, an, of, of a mosquito. You know, subhanAllah, you think about people that are very, very strict on the rituals. They want to make sure their wudu is right, they want to make sure their ibadah is right. They want to make sure that every single element of their salah, of their siyam is right. And they're very obsessed with the minor details even. And every detail counts because nothing is insignificant. But they get to a point where they obsess themselves with that and they ignore major things, major discrepancies in the deen in their lives. And so Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma said, where are you from? And they told him where they are from. He said, subhanallah, yas'aluna an dam al-ba'ul. وَقَدْ قَتَلُوا إِبْنَ نَبِيِّ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ They're asking about the blood of a mosquito. And they have shed the blood of the son of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Of course, being the grandson, Al-Husayn رضي الله تعالى عنه. Can you imagine the discrepancy in your mind when a person who shed the blood of a descendant of the grandson of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is asking about the blood of an insect and what that does for a person's wudu. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma is saying, what are you thinking about here? How did this become your deen? How did you turn that into your religion? Aren't you thinking about other things as well? The harm that your hand has committed? And asking yourself about the fear of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that on your hand? Allah azza wa jal mentions to us, وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ حَمَلَ ظُلْمًا Verily the one who carries an oppression, a transgression, on their back on the Day of Judgment will fail. They will lose. And you've got to ask yourself, is there any zulm in my life? 
that I recognize, that I need to take care of before I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because I don't want to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a zalim, as an oppressor. And someone might think to themselves, well, you know what? We live in a day and age where the only way to survive in this jungle of dunya in the 21st century is to be an oppressor before someone oppresses you. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa warns, be the abd of Allah who is mazloom, not the one who is zalim. Be the one who is maqtul, not the one who is qatil. When that time comes, choose to be the one who is wronged, do not become the one who wrongs. When that time comes and people murder, choose to be the murderer, do not be a murderer. Because the consequences of harm in this life are relegated to this life. But to committing harm carries with you into the hereafter. And it can become a major issue. People say it's the only way I can function in this society is I have to commit dhulm here, and I've got a wrong here, and I've got to cheat here. It's not an excuse. One of the narrations of our Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam in Ibn Abi Hatim is that when Ayyub alayhi salam was making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ya Rabb, O oh my Lord, you've provided me health and wealth and children. فَلَمْ يَقُمْ أَحَدٌ عَلَىٰ بَابِي يَشْكُونِي بِظُلْمٍ ظَلَمْتُهُ and not once in my life did anyone stand at my door complaining of a dhulm, of an oppression that I have committed against them. Can we say that as well when we make dua to Allah? Oh Allah, no one has complained about a dhulm that we have committed against them. No one has said that I have wronged them. Can we claim that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that Ayyub alayhi salam could? Or have we conveniently forgotten? SubhanAllah, another great leader, one of the greatest leaders of all time, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, who is known for his mark of al-adl, his mark of justice. He was a copy of his grandfather, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He took the khilafah at the age of 38 years old, and in two years established adl, established justice throughout the earth. And everyone praises him for his justice. And he would go back and remember when he was the governor in Medina in his 20s. And the Khalifa at the time gave him the order to carry out a punishment that he did not believe was justified against Khubayb, the son of Abdullah ibn Zubayr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. And he used to think back on that when people come to him and they praise him and they tell him you're this and you're that and look at your justice. He would cry and he would say, what about Khubayb? You praise him for a hundred things, he goes back and he remembers his one fall. And it's the one fault, the one fear of dhulm, that keeps him doing a hundred more praiseworthy things. Because it keeps him humble, it keeps him grounded. And so if you say to yourself, I don't think I've ever said anything that harmed anyone. Alhamdulillah, good, but think harder. If you think to yourself, I've never wronged anyone, think harder. Because your tongue has surely slipped even with the ird, with the honor of your brother and sister at some point. And seek Allah's forgiveness for that. And rectify your faults. Do not meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those forms of dhulm unreconciled. Meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment while being able to say, Ya Rabb, Anyone that I wronged, I sought their forgiveness and I tried to make things right. Ya Rabb, I tried to deal with everyone with justice and fairness. Ya Rabb, those that you placed in my care will only claim ihsan, will only claim excellence from my treatment towards them. Do not meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, 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 with the portfolio of a zalim, with the profile of an oppressor. Dear brothers and sisters, we see all over the world all types of tyranny. We see it in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free our brothers and sisters in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and liberate the land of Palestine from its oppressors. Allahumma ameen. We see oppressors from within and from without. And every single one of us should be concerned with those forms of oppression today and should be dedicated to ending those forms of oppression today and then transfer that into the end of oppression from within. At-takhallus min al-dhulm. To clear our homes, to clear our hearts, to clear our tongues from wronging people. And then to focus on joining the noble causes 
of people that are striving against the tyrants of the day. And to never forget what is happening there and my role in what is happening there while at the same time not being disconnected from what is happening here. It is the day of Ashura. It is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Musa alayhi salam over his Fir'aun. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to the oppressed all over the world over their tyrants. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them victory over their tyrants. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us from all forms of tyranny in our speech, in our wealth, in our hearts, with our families, with our friends, with those that are at our mercy, with those who work with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify us from ever committing dhulm against any person that is in our lives. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa risa'al al-muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اغفر لنا ورحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا اللهم أصلحنا وأصلح بنا اللهم اهد ووفق سلطان سلنجور اللهم أدم العون والهداية والتوفيق والصحة والسلامة منك يا رب اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاه